Hi, this is Aaron at thinkaboutlabs.com and welcome back. Today we're going to look at setting up a camera follow script with screen clamping. So what we want, we want the camera to be able to follow our character through this scene. When we play it now, the camera is stationary and our player can potentially run out of screen view. We always want the player in the scene. We always want to be able to view the character, so we need to create a script to have the camera follow that character. A couple things. On the camera, what we're going to be affecting is the position. On left and right, and up and down. I went ahead and created a tile platform that is much wider than the camera view angle to demonstrate camera following and clamping. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's create a new folder called scripts and drag our robot controller into it. That way we have a little organization in scripts. Let's create a new C sharp script called follow target. Okay, let's open that up. Okay, let's go ahead and remove everything out of it. First thing we need is a public transform so we can say what we are following, what the camera is following. So public transform target. This is what we are following. We'll need a variable to set the velocity of the camera so we can slow it down or speed it up. So it is a vector 3 velocity equals vector 3 0. Zeros out the velocity. Okay. Then in our fixed update We'll have to get the target position it's spell today vector 3 target position equals target dot position and since we're only going to be working on the X and Y axis we need to um, set the camera's Z axis with the um, targets Z axis target position dot z equals transform dot position dot z and this is align the camera and the target z position And the last thing we need for the camera to follow the character is a smooth damp. So a smooth damp will gradually change the camera's transform position to the target's position based on the camera's transform velocity and our smooth time value. So for smooth time, and this is the smooth time is the amount we're going to give the camera to transition into the into the move. So this is going to be public float smooth time equals and we'll set it to 15. And this is the time to follow target. So what we're going to say is the transform.position equals vector3 smooth damp transform.position target position with a reference to the velocity in our smooth time. Okay, let's go have a look at that. Let's go ahead and save it. Okay, let's go to our camera and drag the follow target script onto it. And we see that we have the target is a transform, so we're going to grab our robot. 
Okay, and let's play that and see how it looks. All right. Great, so we can see that the camera is following the character. And if you look closely at the camera, you can see that it lags a little bit behind the camera. That's our smooth time. Great, so the next thing we need to do is we need to set up clamping. And what clamping is going to be is that when we get to the edge of the screen, we don't want our camera to be able to go past this line right here. Same with the opposite side. Go over here, we don't want our camera to go back. So we need to be able to clamp the positions on the um, X and even potentially the Y. So let's go back to our script and set that up. All right, so we need Okay, so we need some variables to enable and set those values. So let's create those. Enable and set the maximum Y value. We need to enable and set the Y value, the minimum Y value. We'll need to do the same for the X um, direction. And enable and set the minimum X value. All right, so for the maximum Y value, set a public bool, um, Y max enabled. This is so we can just turn it off and on um, if we want that feature or not. I'm going to set it to false by default. And then public float Y max value. I'm going to set to zero. And set the same for the Y. So public full Y min enabled equals false and public float Y min value equals zero. You can see where we're going with this. So public full X max enabled equals false and then public float x max value equals zero and the last one is the public pool x min enabled equals false and then public float x min value All right, so right after we get the target's position, let's create some space in here. We'll need to, we're manipulating the X and Y, so um, vertical and the horizontal. For the vertical, we're gonna say if Y min enabled and Y max enabled target position dot Y equals math dot clamp and then we're going to clamp between two values so what we're clamping is the target position dot y. Those values are y min value and y max value. And since we're only doing one line we don't need to have the curlies. So 
And we'll start with the next one. I'm going to say, else if the y min is enabled, target position y is equal to math clamp target position target dot position dot y comma y min value and then we're going to use the targets uh, position dot y as current okay and then the opposite with the y max value else if y max value or y max in, is enabled target position dot y equals mathf dot clamp target dot position dot y comma target dot position dot y y max value and that's all we need to do for the vertical and we need to repeat that entire process for the horizontal so I'm going to just copy all this paste and so we're going to say if the x min is enabled and the x max is enabled and then let's go through and swap out the values so x min value x max value x x and x and we need to set vector on these positions and these target positions all right so we have x x and x great let's go ahead and save it and go back to our scene all right, now we see that in our follow target script, we have all the public variables available to us. So let's go ahead and play the scene and ingest those. All right, we can see that um, our camera is still following our character. But we, what we don't want to see is the bottom of the platform underneath it. So that is going to be on our Y axis. And to adjust that, we need the Y min is enabled, and you can see that screen drop down to zero. And we need to set its value, just so just go ahead and select it. And the box around the camera that is the camera that's the camera size. I'm leaving mine at nine right now. Um, I like the size that it is. Uh, once we get into level design, we may um, change that size. But for right now, we're leaving that at nine. So at the very bottom of that um, box, we want the we want the platform to only be visible, none of the blue space underneath it. So drop that down. Okay, and then on the X, Max, and Min, when we walk off to the side, we don't want this space over here to be shown. We want the camera to stop as soon as it gets to the edge of the platform. So an easy way to judge that is just move your character and camera to the edge of that platform okay and so this is going to be the minimum value so that x minimum value copy that x min we're going to enable that and paste that in there and we're going to run over to the opposite side and do the same thing so we don't want to see any of this 
So let's come to the edge of it. Go ahead and grab the x value. And we're going to say x max, x max enabled and set that value. So now when we run, the camera is still following the character. When we come over to the edge of the screen, the camera is going to stop. Which is exactly what we want. And same thing with the other side. You see in my uh, scene view, the camera picks right back up once he gets past the um, maximum and minimum values. So don't forget while you're in um, play mode, anything that you've changed is going to be reverted as soon as you uh, uncheck play. So there's a cogwheel over on the right hand side. Get the drop down, copy component, turn off play, and everything resets. Go back to the cogwheel, paste components as values, and now we have those values. Let's go ahead and play again just to make sure. And it's there. Okay, and remember you can also adjust the smooth time if you want the camera to have a little more or a little less lag when it follows the player. That's all for this tutorial. Have a great day. We'll see you later.